Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 1v1 in Crossing in the Woods. Our heroes today are going to be Strecho, playing for the Soviets in the blue. And his opponent in the red is going to be Dage, playing as the... Well, not really Wehrmacht, the Ostir, but playing as the Germans. Now... By the time that this comes out, obviously, because I'm recording it the day of, <laughs> uh, a patch has come out on the 9th of September that has made several changes. This recording, I'll disclaim it right now, is from the previous patch, so do not expect to see any of the changes. If everything goes according to plan, the next uh, match as well will be from the previous patch. And then afterwards, on Monday, I should be able to get back into the current patch and uh, proceed with, you know, recordings of those new games. But yeah, for now, we're still on the old patch. So just keep that in mind when you see the units maybe behaving a little bit more differently than you're expecting. So anyways, uh, we see Dage going for tier one, as you would expect, but getting himself two MG42s, which you don't expect that too much. But well, we'll see if that's only just a defensive measure or if he's actually going for spam. MG42 running straight over to the left-hand side. It actually decides not to stop on the other side of the river and gets itself caught way out of position there by a conscript squad. The conscript squad for Strecho decides to stop right in front of the arc of fire of the MG42, but considering that the weapon team takes additional accuracy and gets shot in the face more frequently, the gunner dies and the crew is forced to retreat. Thankfully there for Dagi, he didn't actually lose the, uh, the MG weapon because the concept squad was right on top of it and could have very easily cleared out. As far as Strecho goes, he did not go for any tech right now. He's just getting himself conscripts, as you would normally expect. Combat engineers on the left-hand side get, did get pushed away by the Pios, but the Pios ended up having to fight the conscripts, and, well, they, they lose. So conscripts just moving back. They're going to go straight for the fuel point. Strecho not really caring too much about the victory points at this point just yet, but he does have four conscripts on the field, which will provide him quite a hefty amount of field capture. Now, as the third unit for Mr. Dage, we do see the Grenadier squad on the field. So thankfully, at least for us, he's not going for any type of spam. It looks like he wanted to try to control territory early on, but he went a little bit too greedy with his MG42. The MG42 could have easily stopped right here, like here and cover when they saw a little bit of, of engagement, stopped the conscript squad that was approaching, forced it to retreat, and then it would have pushed easily to the other side and gotten the fuel. But he got too greedy, and uh, the conscripts caught him out of position. MG42 popping into the house a little bit more defensively, not wanting to get itself flank. flanked. Flanked, I mean. Uh, does manage to catch a conscript squad out in the open as it's crossing through the street. Gets it suppressed, but it looks like the conscript squad manages to crawl itself out of the sight range of that MG42, and will continue further to the north to capture the point. Not even suppressed anymore, they decide to continue to crawl. Far right-hand side, we see a Molotov getting tossed. Yeah, Molotovs have been researched. Into the house as the MG42 got placed there to control the territory. Three of the men of the squad have been lost. More Molotovs flying, this time at the Grenadiers outside. MG42 does manage to throw a burst off on that conscript squad at the front, getting it suppressed. Right. That's not a rifle grenade, that's a stun grenade. So Dage showing his hand right now if Mr. Strecho is aware of it. Because I know that in my games, I didn't really notice even though that I, I saw stun grenades. But what that means is that Dage, as you can see here, has gone for the Elite Troops Doctrine. There, that's a little bit more representative. So, Strecho, for his part, decides to go for the counter-attack tactics that will give him those nice shock rifles and the howitzer that is just a beast, the B4. No Up in the north, Grand Squad retreating. The conscripts are actually in position to potentially score a kill but they don't manage to do that. They Ura out of the way of a grenade from the Grand Squad. And the uh, the Grand Squad gets itself into light cover. But the Conscripts quickly run back, throw a Molotov in its face, and get themselves in superior cover. Now, once again, the unit profiles have been changed in the recent patch. So that, you know, the Conscripts and Rifle are pretty much dominant in the uh, close to mid range. Against, you know, Grenadiers and Volks Grenadiers. But for now... While that's still probably the case, it uh, it hasn't been changed because, again, this is from the previous patch. So that fight may have gone differently 
in the uh, in the new patch, maybe the conscripts could have actually killed off the Grand Squad before it even ran away, so we don't know. We will have to wait and see. Anyways, conscripts continue to push to the left-hand side. They get themselves brought down to three men since the piles are able to inflict a lot of damage at that relative close range and are forced to retreat. Far left-hand side, we see Grand Squad recapture in territory. The MG for Mr. Dage is actually just left there in that house. That is quite disappointing. I... I'm not a particular fan of MGs being left in houses. We see that over on the right-hand side, an MG has been lost to the battlefield. Uh, is it around here? I think it's here. And we do see a man inside dead, but I don't see the weapon dropped anywhere. But still, nobody picked up the weapon, which means it's lost to the battlefield, and I am betting you that the guy died inside there. So that is unfortunate. I mean, if you're going to go for... A 2 MG opening. Try and be aggressive with them, I would say. Pius in the center, getting pushed away by a conscript squad. Barely makes it out with one man. We see shock troops getting called in onto the field for Stretcher. So going very, very heavy in his infantry play early on. No tech whatsoever. So we'll see if he... Oh, sorry about that. I never removed that before mark there. Somebody's OCD may have gone off right there. <laughs> Left-hand side, we hear Conscripts and Garens engaging. A stun grenade does go off on the Conscripts, damaging them and, well, stunning them. They manage to shake it off and start getting some more damage in on that Grand Squad. Rifle grenade goes off to to throw a little bit of a tandem. Took a little bit too long on that. If he could have tossed it as they got stunned, it would have been a nice combo there. But Grand Squad is forced to retreat. The Conscripts stay alive with four men, and they are healthy enough to capture the point. Center map, the conscripts do crawl back into heavy cover and break their suppression. And on the far right-hand side, we see a grenade going off in the center. Looks like it was a grenade, a stun grenade from one of these grand squads. As they run to get themselves into the house, they take a lot of damage as they do. Grenade goes off into the house, kills off the remaining squad. Nice move there by Stretcher, nice combination, and gets himself a nice pickup. I mean, game is almost over at this point, essentially. I mean... Losing a Grand Squad and an MG this early on against all this. It's going to be very difficult for Daggett to bounce back from. He does go for Tier 2. Gets himself a Panzer Grenadier Squad. Not a bad choice. Panzer Grenadiers will do a lot of damage to Conscripts. Not going to be too great against the Shock Troops, I don't think. Although, eh, I guess it'll be fine. Uh, and, I mean, getting himself a Scout Car while helpful... I mean, there's a lot of conscripts on the field, so I understand why you would go for only the uh, the Panzer Grenadiers. And he's probably just saving that fuel for something else. I would assume. Could actually utilize his uh, Doctrine um, uh, Veterancy ability and uh, spend his fuel on that. God knows you don't need fuel for the uh, Tiger Race, so there you go. MG42 getting double Molotov'd in that... Uh, almost broken check completely uh set up blaze right now manages to get out of there with one man g43 is equipped on grins they get close up and try to inflict as much damage as they can on those conscripts but down to one man forced to retreat conscripts trying to focus fire but they won't be able to pick up the kill second grin squad moves in to relieve them down to two men on one conscript squad other conscript squad is at five man strong so they will inflict a lot of damage and over on the right hand side we see pios capturing the center point as conscripts just sit at range picking off some shots and getting a lot of damage on them since, well, all they have is SMGs. Far right-hand side, the Chalk Troop Squad did capture the fuel points, so right now Strecho is in a very dominant position, able to really do whatever he wants. So he's going to go for Tier 2, and he's getting himself a Maxim Machine Gun from Tier 2. Interesting choice, considering how late it is right now in the game, 10 minutes in, to get a Maxim Machine Gun out. But, yeah, I mean, it'll help him out, lock down some territory. Not a lot of infantry on the field for it to lock down, however, so that is why I'm not too particular of that choice, but eh, it'll, it, it's fine. I mean, it, it's still very capable of fighting. What I do hope, though, is that Stretcher doesn't just simply go and plop it in a house like to cover a fuel point. He uses it a little bit more aggressively and fights. That would probably help him out a lot more. Grands with G43s push back out. They manage to force away the conscript squad and this Gren squad does have 12 kills so that veterancy is actually legit considering you have elite troops doctrine you are never too certain of which uh, veterancy is actually acquired and because that little gap is right there that unfortunately means for Mr. Dage that the right hand side resources are no longer providing him anything 
Grins moving out with Pyros for support. Panzer Grenadiers are on the field. They're on the right-hand side. They pushed away the cons... I'm not the conscripts, the shock troops. The shock troops are back at base, now reinforced. Maxim machine gun on the field pushes up, covers the munitions point, forces away the Grand Squad, and the MU-42 with only three men is getting some shots off at the conscripts as they capture the point. Second squad does get suppressed as shots fly in its direction. And they do manage to decap, but I think they're going to get pinned down soon. Well, actually, maybe one squad may get pinned down. I think they're going to be fine. The point will get captured. The conscripts uh, on the back half actually broke in the suppression already. Left-hand side, a combat engineer squad was going for the flank, but it manages to get itself caught. However, that allows the conscript squad to Ura forward past the arc of fire of the MG-42 and get right on top of it. MG-42 instantly retreats. Shots fly. We'll probably get a kill there on the squad. Uh, I mean, a kill on one of the members of the squad, but no, not even not even that. They're they're alive and they're fine. Second Panzer Grenadier squad brought onto the field for Mr. Dage. He's gonna try and push with them and the G43 Grunts. Maxim machine gun is on the field, being used aggressively, so that will be very difficult for those Panzer Grunts to deal with, no matter how good they are. And the combat engineers give an advance warning and realize that the Grunts. And, oh, that almost dies. Whoa, down to one. What the hell was that? Not entirely too sure what went on there. The house is on fire, but this thing over here burst into flames and forced the Grand Squad to retreat. Right-hand side, shock troops and Panzer Grenadiers duke it off. Down to two men on the shock troop squad, down to one on the Panzer Grenadier, and they make it out. Maxim Machine Gun getting some damage off on the Grins on the left-hand side. House collapses, so no more MG in that check. I mean, possibility for uh, Dagi. He still has that MG on the field. He needs to push out with it and place it in a little bit of a more defensive position to try to force away some squats and then start creeping forward. Conscript's going to go cap the point. Conscript's back off and get behind the shack. And the, uh, the Pios and Grins and MG-42 are pulling up. MG-42 does set up in heavy cover. We'll be able to get a nice angle on the conscripts. Conscripts instantly retreat, noticing an MG is facing them. Lose one of their men on the retreat, but they're fine at three. Back at base, we now see Tier 4 going down for Stretcho. It's an interesting choice. Not a lot of anti-infantry firepower with Tier 4, at least in my opinion. Yes, the Katusha will kill a lot of infantry, but it's just so damn inaccurate that it's not reliable. SU-76, eh, its barrage is pretty nice. If he goes for that, I guess it's fine. But, I mean, the SU-85 is just not going to do too much. Maxim Machine Gun gets itself stunned there by the Grenz, uh stun grenade. Molotov flies in its direction. Sets them ablaze down to one man on each of the squads. One being a Grenz, one being a Pyo. And they force him away. MG-42 on the field gets a Conscript Squad suppressed. Conscript Squad moving in for the flank, but it runs straight into a two, uh, two squads of uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Getting a lot of damage done to them. Down to three men. Maxim Machine Gun tries to refocus fire on one of the Panzer Grenadier squad. Manages to catch it and get it suppressed. Second squad closing the distance. Sprint getting activated on the uh, Maxim Machine Gun. Tries to run away, staying on the field. Manages to actually run away uh, not very successfully. Runs away a little bit, but now down to two men. Actually, oh no, the Maxim Machine Gun is going to go down. Is Daga going to steal it? He goes for the steal on the Panzer Grenadiers. Needs to retreat right now. Oh no, Panzer Grenadiers retreating through Conscripts. The Conscripts are going to take some shots. It's a very healthy one man, however, so he may be fine. Yeah, he's going to make it out. Maxim Machine Gun as well, retreating the Conscripts, aiming, taking some shots. We'll do some damage, but they're fine. Back at base, do we have a med bunker? Yes, we do. Dage on point with the med bunker now, and he will be able to get those squads back in full action. So that's very nice pick up there for Dage. Eliminates the Maxim Machine Gun from the field and picks it up for his own. So that will relieve that pressure that he has been under for a little bit. MG-42 pushing up for Dage, finally being utilized a little bit more intelligently instead of just being placed in the houses. And we see a second shock troop squad on the field for Mr. Strecho. Moving together, conscripts and shock troops back at base. We have more conscripts. Far right hand side, we have shock troops. And out on the map, we see a fuel cache getting dropped by Strecho. Tier 4 is down for Strecho. He's been down for a little bit now. He's still not building anything from it, so... Not too sure what he's going for. I mean, he could have just waited for the KV-1 rather than spend the fuel into uh, Tier 4. So, I mean... I suppose it all depends right now on what he builds and how long it takes for him to build it, whether it was the right move or not. 
So, shock troops retreating from the right hand side as they ran into a Grand Squad with G43s. They didn't feel too comfortable in that engagement since there was a second Grand Squad around, so they retreat back to the safety of their base, get re reinforced, get healed up, I would assume. Yeah, there are the, uh, there's the medics. And for now, he's in an excellent position and continues to capture territory on the other side of the map. Shock troop squad pushing forward, runs into the Panzer Grenadier squad. Grenade goes off of the. Oh, they're too clumped up! Oh, that's a lot of damage, but. Actually, very luckily for the Panzer Grenadier squad, it only loses two of its members. Shock troops continue to push forward right on top of the Panzer Grenadiers. They're down to three men, however, so they're not going to be able to inflict sufficient damage. Down to two men on the retreat, down to one. Can it actually make it out? Very low health. Shots continue to fly. SMG is not very good at long range. The. Panzer Grenadier's assault rifles are a little bit better, but barely makes it out with one man alive. Very um, very unfortunate that the grenade didn't do too much damage. It was right there in the center, but it only killed two men, so still possible to have that. Maxim Machine Gun and MG42 moving around together, providing a very, uh, very difficult zone for the conscripts to move around in. Back at base, Tier 4 already up again, and still nothing being produced, so... That is a lot of time that nothing is being produced from that once again. Could have saved that manpower and that fuel and just be calling KV-1s right now and have those on the field, but well, to each his own. Maybe he felt himself in a little bit of pressure and wanted to call in an SU-85 because he thought a Panzer IV may be coming, but Panzer IV, we see that only now is starting to be produced as Tier Three has gone down for that game. So. And even there, a KV-1 is actually quite uh, quite fine against a Panzer IV. It's not going to win the engagement, I don't think, but it's going to take the Panzer IV a while to kill him. So unless you just suicide it into the your enemy, the KV-1 is enough to keep a Panzer IV at bay. And then you call another one, because, you know, it only costs 145 fuel. Conscripts in the center retreating. Left-hand side. Piles and the stolen Maxim. Just covering some territory. MG42 moving up. We do have a combat in the rear squad. Oh, a very sneaky uh, demo charge on the field for Strecho. He has apparently already utilized one as uh, Crater is already there. And what was lost? It looks like a Panzer Grenadier squad. Ooh, very nice pickup there for Strecho. MG42 moving up. It runs near the demolition charge, but decides not to actually step on it. Moves to the left and is going to capture the point. So. Didn't work this time. Far right hand side, Panzer IV rearing its ugly head. Spots a shock troop squad, double shock troop squad, so it doesn't actually have anything to fear on this side. Conscript squad is on the field. It uras across the river to get a little bit faster, and it does manage to actually get itself behind the retreat path of the Panzer IV. The Panzer IV is in a little bit of trouble. We'll have to push forward or just uh, sit there and take the damage. It will sit there and take the damage. 18 8 goes off. Gets a crit on the engine, and the Panzer IV is currently snared. It'll slowly crawl back. We do have an AT gun getting produced for Strecho. But once again, he is just holding on to that fuel, and his Tier Four has been down all this time. So, again, I forget exactly how he said it, but... Um, but, uh, I mean, I used to watch, probably, maybe a lot of you did, but if not, I mean, uh, Inverse was a very awesome uh, Vico player. He's not, he doesn't play Code 2 that much. He doesn't like the game. But in Vico, he used to make a lot of strategy guides and videos and such. And he, uh, like I said, I forget exactly how he said it, but he made an excellent point about not actually building uh, tech if you're not going to use it. Because, I mean, that is wasted resources, essentially. It's the same thing as floating. Um, because that resource could be employed for something else all this time. So... If you're going to be building a uh, tech building, at least build something from it uh, relatively quickly so that the investment into the tech building is not a waste. So, like I said before, I mean, Strecho could have gotten himself uh, far, far or long ago an SU-76 at the very least. It's a, it's a little versatile. It has the ability for the barrages. It will help you against the infantry, help you dislodge those uh, machine guns and such. And if some light vehicles come up, they can support fire. And again, against the uh, Panzer IV, it can also provide some support fire at range, especially if you snare it like that with an 18.8. But it's at least something that is on the field. Um, so far, right now, and even continues to be, uh, that Tier 4 is there and useless, and those resources could have been spent somewhere else, like I mentioned before. Could have skipped that and just have at least a KV-1 heavy tank on the field right now, so... 
not not too fond of that decision right now for Stretcher, so keep it in mind if you're listening. So Panzer IV, noticing that there is really no opposition on him, decides to just pop itself into the front of the base and uh, get some shots in there. Almost kills off a conscript squad on the retreat. But there is an AT gun on the field that manages to hit it, and it, it realizes that and just backs off. Shock troops pushing forward. Oh, they're going to get a kill on the... No, the Grand Squads are still healthy, still alive. Can they make it out? Shots fly at a distance. They whisk through their ears and besides them, but they barely make it out. So now we see the KV-1 on the field for Strecho, uh, essentially making this investment completely useless. So again, not not too not too happy with that, man. I'll start har I'll stop harping on it now. I mean, I think I've said my piece, but yeah, well, there you go. So KV-1 on the field for Strecho. That will help him combat that Panzer IV again. It is not the counter, but it is. Like, I've, like I like to mention before, a deterrent, because the Panzer IV will not easily just run into your base and do a lot of damage to your infantry if you have a tank to fight it. And the KV-1 is, you know, it's decently capable of fighting it, and especially with the support of an AT gun on the field, and that is sufficient to keep that Panzer IV at bay, and even kill it off if uh, something, you know, goes a little bit too too ballsy. So we see uh, Dage utilizing his... Um, his... Uh, ability, the uh, the that thing, the veterancy ability. I don't know what he used it on. May have been the Panzer IV. I mean, the Panzer IV is veterancy too. Already only has eight kills, which you know I don't think is enough. But well, we'll see. Maxim machine gun on the left hand side finally gets dropped once again. Stretcho quickly runs in its direction to pick it up. Panzer Grenadiers are moving in to stop them. Conscripts retreat, and the Maxim machine gun. Decides to set itself up in a very awkward angle. Going to get cleared out there by the Panzer Grenadiers. You got to make sure that your uh, weapon team also retreats quickly. But for now, it's lost. Panzer IV moving up to support. Grenade goes off on the Conscript. The Conscript dodge that just by standing there like badasses. The uh, KV-1 moves up. Not in range of the Panzer IV. Needs to move up a little bit more. AT gun is getting some shots off at a distance. So the Panzer IV is taking damage. The KV-1 turns its sights on the Grand Squads as they approach. And manages to get some damage on there. Not really too much, but, you know, a little bit of splash damage. There we go. Nice shot. Gets one more kill. Panzer Grenadiers push forward. Conscript's down to two men, forced to retreat. Conscript squad at three men, holding strong. Down to two men, going to be forced to retreat as well. And the uh, KV-1 retreats as the Grand Squad moves up to Faustet. Does get Faustet and critted, but it's fine. There's no pack gun on the field, and the Panzer IV is long gone, so it'll be fine. AT gun taking some serious damage here by the Grenz. It got cleared out and is now on the field. And we also have another demolition charge on the center map. Left-hand side also blew up. Did it actually kill anything? I don't know. I am the master of missing detonations of, um, of demo charges. So there you go. AT gun now cleared out. The KV-1 is in a lot of trouble. Panzer IV manages to get itself behind its um, behind uh, behind him, uh, exposing its rear armor. Panzer IV itself also exposing the rear armor to the KV-1. Takes a lot of damage down to about half health. But on a one-on-one, -on -one, the Panzer IV, I believe, does win. It has a stronger weapon. Uh, it has a 76mm main gun, and this one doesn't actually say, so I can't comment. But um, but the KV-1 does have a very strong armor. It's a heavy tank, so the Panzer IV does have quite a bit of trouble. 18 8 does go off into the rear armor of the Panzer IV, snaring it, and more damage goes off. The KV-1 now in excellent shape to chase it down. Smoke does get popped by the Panzer IV. Not enough munitions here to be able to toss another 18-8, so the conscripts just continue to pursue, getting line of sight. The KV-1 should be able to take a shot. Shot goes off and down goes the Panzer IV. A nice pickup here for Mr. Strecho. And unfortunately, I think I have an issue with that, so let me take a second. Okay, so again... Somehow it looks like my overlay did not render properly or something. Uh, it's, it was a little bit behind. I tried to catch it up. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, because now there's a Tiger Ace on the field. So Tiger Ace now pushing. Oh, is it going to run through the uh, demolition charge? That would be amazing. Well, it's coming that way. Is he going to pop it? He's going to pop it. Pop. He does, but that actually didn't do too much damage. Tiger Ace does take some damage though. It is down to about 75% strength, maybe 80, probably 90. Uh, <laughs> KV-1 trying desperately to get repaired back at base. 
It is at about 30% strength. The Tiger Rays just moves straight up. Gets itself 18 aided by Conscripts, and they actually manage to get the penetration on the um, on the on the engine. So the uh, Tiger Ace is snared. The KV-1 trying desperately to run away. Gets hit in the rear armor. It does have a damaged engine, so it is unable to easily run away from the Tiger Ace. Uh, the Regimental Field Headquarters uh, <laughs> taking one for the team, and it manages to absorb a shot from the Tiger Ace as the uh, KV-1 moves behind it. AT gun getting produced here by Strecho. That Tiger Race is now in a horrible position. It needs to focus down the AT gun, actually. Just focus the AT gun and you'll be fine. AT gun sets up. Gonna get some shots off on the Tiger Race. Tiger Race taking some more damage. Tiger Race uh, playing ring around the headquarters. Manages to inflict more damage on the KV-1. KV-1 getting a shot off on the rear armor. KV-1 goes down. Tiger Race taking some more damage. Down to about 20% strength. Gets itself behind the arc of fire of the AT gun. The AT gun now taking a lot of damage. Turns itself around. The Tiger Ace is not playing ring around the AT gun. AT gun nails it on the rear armor. Popped its smoke. AT gun can just attack ground. Oh, and it does. And down goes the Tiger Race. Nice reaction there by Strecho. Thinking on his feet. And he manages to eliminate that Tiger Ace. Well, that brings him back into the game. That Tiger Ace could have actually finished this. Like I said, the Tiger Race actually needed to focus on the AT gun to take it out. If it had actually taken out the AT gun, it would have been a different game. The uh, AT gun up in the north has been taken from uh, by Dage. So that was not capable of being recovered. But for now, though, uh, Strecho is uh, infantryless. I mean, not infantryless, uh, tankless. He only has infantry on the field. A lot of infantry, though, so it allow him to recapture points. Victory points right now, anybody's game is 330 for Strecho, 294 for Dage. Dage currently going to be getting himself a triple cap, but, um, well, a lot of infantry is pushing over to the left-hand side, so that might not may, may not be the case. Maxim Machine Gun still left in the world, could have been picked up by those Pios before they uh, ran in that direction and covered the uh, victory point. But Dage, I think, was a little bit too focused on the tank. Once again... Look at this building. It's so pretty, yet it hasn't actually done anything. Artillery barrage <laughs> going off from the stolen AT gun, trying to hit the uh, the fuel cache. Not quite getting it. Falling a little bit short. Stretcho's AT gun taking some shots off at a distance at that stolen AT gun. The shock troops move in behind it. They'll clear it very quickly. You can see the amount of damage going off there, and that AT gun is now... Once again, for stretch of staking. Conscripts did capture the point. The uh, Maxim machine gun is still there, left on the field, but these conscripts are taking a little bit of a breather. We'll see if he goes for the cap. Left hand side points getting capped once again. And yeah, I mean, Strecho is in a wonderful position. Dage has lost everything. He lost his uh, ace, essentially. <laughs> his tiger ace. Ace in the hole or in the pocket or whatever you call it. But, um,. But yeah, I mean, he still has a couple of infantry on the field. Not a lot of manpower. Uh, building tier 4. Not entirely too sure why, but well, we'll see. Another KV-1 getting called onto the field. It's a good thing that uh, Strecho didn't build tier 4, because otherwise he would have wasted some resources there. And Conscripts in the center, retreating, but a little bit too late. Get themselves killed. So Strecho wavering a little bit. KV-1 going to push forward right on top of the Panzer Grenadiers and the Grand Squad. Grand Squad will be throwing a Faust at it. However, it's probably going to get itself killed. Down to one man needs to retreat. Panzer Grenadiers and KV-1 retreat. Nice shot goes off. Kills the Gren. Kills one more Panzer Grenadier. And the Conscripts are in line to shoot it. Execute him on the run. And down goes the Panzer Grenadier squad. Once again, that overlay is a little bit delayed. Sorry, I'm not going to... You know what? No, never mind. Let me fix it. There we go. Hopefully that will be enough to fix it throughout the game. I know what caused the problem this time for the overlay. I was hoping that it wouldn't, but it. Uh, but yeah, it's my fault. I was trying to optimize my uh, my productivity, and I was recording the overlay while I was rendering another video at the same time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, evidently that caused a little bit of a performance issue, and it made the uh, the overlay lag essentially. So Maxim Machine Gun gets recovered on the left-hand side, but Strecho is currently dueling with a MG42. It's winning the duel as the MG42 is currently pinned down. 
forced to retreat, but it's going to get shot by the Maxim Machine Gun. Maxim Machine Gun actually ends up reloading right as the MG42 retreats, so it manages to stay alive. Conscripts on the left-hand side do go for the cap, but, well, we now see that Dage is down to very low amounts of troops. He ended up investing into Tier 4, which is very questionable. I mean, I suppose a Panther would probably be good against the KV-1, but... I mean, really, at this point, he needed to get more infantry or... Well, I mean, really, the game was probably lost already because of the loss of his uh, Tiger Rays that quickly. I mean, it is a... Uh, it is a significant investment, even though it only, you know... It costs... It, it only costs manpower. It's also a Doctrine Torchin. It pigeonholes you. I mean, you're going for that Doctrine, essentially, for that tank isn't to be able to push in the late game, but... Losing it that fast, I mean, that's fine. I mean, if he had pushed, he didn't manage to kill the tank or something like that and just backed off, that's fine. You still have that ace and you're able to make very strong pushes, but he went all in and lost the all in. MG42 getting flanked by the conscripts. Maxim Machine Gun holding it off very easily. Maxim Machine Gun could deal with the merge here. Those conscripts could be, you know, buddies and just decide to jump chip. Now I have a Panther on the field. That Panther will be able to deal with KV1s, you know, relatively easy, but. Again, I mean, I don't think that's what he needs, really. Or, or at least I don't think that's what's going to make that big of a difference. So, Panther pushes into the center. Sees a conscript squad. The conscript squad. Uras. Uh, excuse me. Uras away in an attempt to, uh, to bait the Panther to chase it. We see two mines right there in the center. So, Panther not falling for it. Decides to go to the right-hand side. May actually spot the KV-1. But it doesn't actually. It moves in the direction, but the KV-1 moved over to the center. So they managed to miss, miss each other for just by a little bit. Conscripts throw a nice, nice long-range 18 8 Quite an arm on that guy and nails the Panther. Disabling its engine. Well, not disabled, but you know. Snaring it, damaging it, and forcing it to just crawl its way. Or limp its way, I guess you could say. Not really, not really a crawl. Back to base. We'll need the Pios to... Uh, to repair, but the Pios are currently busy in the center. They run into a mine, losing one of their men, and they're now getting shot by conscripts. Pio squad need to remove, I mean, not to remove, but uh, retreat, or it's gonna get killed. Down to two men, will get killed. No, oh, there it goes, retreats. Right hand side, MG42 throwing some incendiary barrages on the uh, AT guns, doing some nice damage, but the uh, KV-1 just moving in its direction, gonna get right on top of it. And deal a lot of damage, shock troops flanking it, and away it has to go. Down to two men on the retreat, down to one, can it make it out? Veteran C3? Nope. Down goes the MG. So with the MG gone, and only having two Grens on the field, I don't see much else that Daga can do here. He is currently triple capped by Mr. Strecho, he's down to 165 points. So I'm going to bet that Dage dies by victory points. I don't think he's going to be giving up. Which again, never give up, never surrender. That is kind of the MO for matches in Company Heroes. But like I mentioned before, I mean, I, I hope that, you know, when it's evident that there's not much you can do, uh, the GG just gets tossed and, you know, call it a game. I don't think that's really going to change much. Like I said, maybe if the eSport part of Company Heroes 2, you know, picks up a little bit more and gets more popular, maybe those GG's will be thrown at earlier times when things happen that definitely have already sealed the uh, the fate of the match. So anyways, second KV-1 getting called onto the field. The Panther blitzes forward, apparently trying to go for the kill on one of the KV-1s. The second KV-1 is nearby to support. Can get itself behind that panther if it decides to move. KV-1 just tanking the panther quite easily as the panther is unfortunately not that great. At least not in this patch against tanks. It has been changed in the recent patch of the, of the uh, on the ninth. Uh, I don't know if they're that much better. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But um, but for now, the, K the, uh, the panthers are behaving much quite like before. And you can see here that it's just not having that great of an effect. I do remember that they gave it more frontal armor on the patch, so it's actually able to take on things from the front very easily. Or, well, much more effectively. Gets 18 by the Conscripts. Damaged engine. Forced to crawl back, or limp back to its base. 
KV-1s have taken some damage. They are down to about eh, 75 to 60% strength each, but they are still quite operational, and they can actually continue to push forward and go on the hunt. That Panther is barely damaged. Not barely, very damaged, and, um, and uh, has a damaged engine, so there we go. KV-1s continue to push forward. They run into the Grand Squad. The Grand Squad will stop them with a Faust. KV-1s back off. And the victory points have been bled by 100, and they, he is now down to 63. 60 at this point. So yeah, I think this is probably going to be the last engagement. However, it resolves, and the game will be over relatively soon. Panzerguard Deer Squad is getting produced for Dage, but... I mean, that. needless to say, it's too little too late. He doesn't have too much to work with. Only two Grand Squads, one of which is retreating. And, yeah, I mean, Pyo's squad isn't really even capable of capping as it's being forced right now to repair the Panther. Grand Squad decides to just essentially suicide itself into where it knows that KV-1s are present. So it takes a lot of damage. Maxim Machine Gun decides to shoot at it. And that is the end of the squad. Squad does get in range to Faust, so it manages to disable or damage, I guess, the engine of the second KV-1. But what that accomplishes is not actually nothing. Nothing, really. Shock troops on the right-hand side just continue to cap territory. Down to 24 points. A couple more ticks and we're done. Panther getting repaired. Panzer Grenadiers getting equipped with Trex heading into the center. But I don't think they're even going to be able to hit, get into the point before the points tick. We do have a mine there, but before that even happens, Dage throws in the towels. He knows that that's it. But like I said before, it would be nice if, uh, you know, the culture of knowing when the game is over gets a little bit earlier so that get games don't drag on when you know that it's already done. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.